Today in the Physics Fun House, we're investigating the idea of work and specifically how the idea of work relates to the idea of energy. Work is another physical quantity and it is simply the product of force, when you push something, and the distance that it moves as a result of it being pushed. With the caveat that the force and the distance must be parallel to each other. And so we have a real simple equation for work. We use the symbol W, what, what, work. Work is simply equal to force times distance with the caveat that the force and the distance have to be parallel to each other. So what a lot of times we'll do is we'll just put the subscript parallel or like two parallel lines like you would in geometry. Um, on either one of those to indicate and remind ourselves that the distance and force have to be parallel. So this real simple picture down here, I've got something being moved at some distance D to the right by a force F that is kind of up and at an angle. We have to realize that only the parallel component would actually do work. The, spoiler alert, the result of doing work on something is that its speed changes or its energy changes, speaking more broadly. And so the lab we're going to do today, we're simply going to pull something up an inclined surface, measure the force exerted, measure how far it moves, and then calculate the work done. And we're going to do that at a bunch of different angles, but we're always going to keep the same height. And so what we want to see is as we mess with these two variables, as we change the distance and thus change the force needed, what happens to the amount of energy that we gain as a result? And so we're going to do a bunch of different trials with different distances, different forces, and see how that affects the work done. So the experiment that we're going to do today consists of a low friction cart, one of our CPO carts on a track, and I'm going to tie a piece of string to this cart, and I'm going to pull this cart upwards by the piece of string. I'm always going to lift the cart up so that the tab on the side facing me, um, there's the single tab over here, I'm going to pull this thing upwards so that this part always moves a height 40 centimeters from where it started from. And so I'm going to carefully measure its initial height and then make sure that its final height ends up being 40 centimeters. And we'll make the angle of the track different angles so that we get different distances but always the same height. So how am I going to measure the force? To measure the force I'm going to use one of our force sensors. I'm just going to connect to that string right there. This is the hardest part about do, trying to do this by myself is keeping all the cables and stuff out of the way. So I'm going to pull this thing um, with the string attached to the force sensor like so. I may even try to shorten the string here in a second. Um, and the purpose of the string, rather than just hooking this thing directly to the cart, is so that I can clearly see that I'm only pulling with a force that is parallel to the track. Because remember that in order for work to be done, the force and the distance must be parallel to each other. And then I can read the force um, on my laptop and I'm just going to keep track of that over there. I'm just going to measure the height of my little tab there. And it is 9.4 centimeters. And so add 40 to 9.4 and that would be 49.4. So I'm going to raise the tab until it is at 49.4 meters. And then I'm just going to come over here and measure where it is on this little meter stick on the track. And so that's like 30, 34.2. 34.2 from 91 gives me 56.8 centimeters or 0.56 meters. So I'm just going to go ahead and record that. 0.568 meters. Over there in my table. The next thing we're going to do is measure the force. And again, I can do that using my force sensor. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and connect the force sensor so that it's like that and make sure that that string is parallel. And then I'm going to zero the force sensor. And to zero it, I'm going to take the clip off of the hook, hold it in the position that I'm going to use it, and press and hold the force, excuse me, the zero button, not there. 
Now if I were to start collecting data, I would get zero force. Right now the force should be reading zero. And then when I tighten the string and start pulling up, I'm gonna pull it at a nice, slow, constant velocity, just like this. It actually doesn't matter how high I pull it because the force should be constant the entire time, pulling at a nice, slow, constant velocity. And so when I then stop collecting data, and then highlight the region where I was pulling it up at a nice constant velocity so I can just draw a box around that. There's my box. Read the force and I get a mean or average force of 5.4 newtons when I do that. So 5.4 newtons for my average force. To calculate the work done, I just have to multiply those two things together. And so down here, I'm just going to do work equals force parallel times D, include that parallel always, so you don't forget. And that would be equal to 5.4 newtons times 0 0.568 meters. So that gives me a work of 3.067, so I'm just going to round that to 3.1. And when you multiply a newton by a meter, the unit is just newton by times a meter, which is a joule. So I went ahead and made a third column over there. So 3.1 would be the work that I did in this particular situation. So next, I'm going to adjust the angle of the track. I'm just going to unscrew it over here, move it up to a higher, uh, more steep angle, and then repeat what I just did. I notice is that when I made the angle steeper I have to travel less distance to get to a height of 40 centimeters but it required more force. If we multiply those two together I get 3.1 joules again. And so what you'll notice is that when you multiply a bigger force by a smaller distance, we ended up getting the same amount of work in both cases. Let's do one more angle and see what that gives us. Four newtons. 4.4 newtons. I promise I didn't plan it to be ending at 4 each time. So 0 0.676 times 4.4 gives me 3.0. So 3.0 in that case. So let's talk about our results real quick. We found that in all three of our trials, when we made the distance the car move larger, the force went down and vice versa which is to be expected. A steeper angle means you have to exert more force, but you don't have as far to move. The work done in all three of those situations was the same within experimental error, especially considering that this was done by a single person. Um, I got 3.1, 3.1, and 3.0 joules, so three for the work done in all three situations. Anytime we get the same number with a different set of input variables, there's probably something special about that number. And so if we compare that work done with the energy gain, so if we calculate the potential energy gained by the cart earth system, multiply mass by g, use 9.8 because we're actually doing a lab in real life here, times the height change of 0.4 meters, I get three joules. So there's something special comparing the work to the energy that was gained by the Carter system. And we're gonna look at a few more examples later on, but here's kind of where we end up with. We end up concluding that the energy gained was equal to the net work done. Let me put a little net in front of here. Because if you have multiple forces doing work, you would simply add the work up to get the net work. We'll explore that later on. And so this is referred to as the work energy theorem. When you do work on something, that work 
causes a change in energy.